Changing the bellows on the Actus Mini GFX is as simple as snap, snap, and pull. There are no levers, there are no locks. You don't have to put it into any grooves. You don't really have to fit it at all. The magnets guide it all the way in. And without the bellows, you can see the camera is extremely slim. Changing the camera from landscape to portrait orientation is as easy as depressing this lever on the side and rotating the, cam rotating the camera along its axis. The mount incorporates all the hardware necessary to do so. It doesn't, however, have a lock, so you've got to be careful. If you put too much torque into the rotation without depressing the lever, you can rotate the camera, but you will damage the lever system. Now, here's how you unplug the camera mount from the pylon. I don't know why I'm rotating this again, but there we go. Now, putting it back in is a little more difficult because you have to ensure that equal pressure is applied to both stumps, but with a little bit of patience, it slides in, and then you can just put the lock back on, and bam, you're ready to shoot. Perfect. Unlike some geared rise and fall systems, the Campo GFX Mini has a lock. And of course it's on gears. Locking it ensures that either long exposures or stacked photographs will not move in vertical position. Unfortunately, the system is severely misaligned. This one by about four millimeters. That's supposed to be a zero position. The Chevron and the zero are not aligned. Moving all the way down to what is supposed to be minus 15, notice that the Chevron stops at about minus 12.5. This is a serious flaw in the design and should not have made it to manufacture. It may only be labeled for 10 and minus 10, but the swing system on this camera goes, well, pretty much till forever. And it's locked at every detent that you see. 10 degrees, 5 degrees. But look, look at that. Whoa, look at that. Going along, keep going, keep going. I can actually twist the entire thing around until it comes 360 degrees. I won't, though. Uh, when I was recording this, I already had cramps in that chunky, fleshy bit under my thumb. So I'm going to just stop there at about whatever that was, 90 degrees or whatever. And back to zero. Now, like the rise and the fall in the rear standard, the front standard tilt is slightly misaligned. As you can tell, the maximum on both settings extends too far or doesn't go quite to the end of its indicated distance. Again, you know, this is not an extremely expensive technical camera, but that is a problem. Here you can see the Mamiya 120mm macro lens. I'm going to pull it and the mount away by loosening the front lock and pulling it up. The lens is then loosened from its mount by pulling this little nib and then rotating the lens away just like you would from a Mamiya body. The mount then can be put back and the bolt fastened by turning the lock and it is solid and voila, are you ready to shoot? I'm expecting comments on this. There's actually a red dot on the mount and a red dot in the lens. They can be aligned and then the lens quickly rotated into place. But watch this fool actually take the largest mounting flange and then insert it into the largest mounting flange. Insert and then rotating. It works, but it takes longer, it's not as elegant, and Cambo and Mamiya all you already have you covered. Oh, whatever. At least it's solid, as you can see. This YouTuber, however, is not. Yeah, so I could not get a lens under the lens mount. 
But when it comes to bellows, I'm a pro. And these Cambo bellows make it extremely easy for even the stupidest person. Just put that silver bolt up top and it will clip into the rear section of the front standard. As long as you got it aligned, it will clip into both odd magnets. It's perfect. If you make a mistake on this system, you're probably stupider than me. Notice that these bellows will collapse extremely far. If you have a wide angle lens with a rear protruding element, that rear protruding element will protrude right through the front standard. If you have a, rather than a GFX on the back, you have a digital uh, medium format back, you could actually probably hit the sensor. So you gotta be careful. But with the GFX, there's no worry of that because of the large flange distance. Now, the lens I have currently right here on the camera is the Schneider 60 millimeter F4 APO Digitar. It is the sharpest wide angle lens I've ever used. And for product photography, even though it's not a macro, it is it produces the most pristine images all the way up to one to one. And I couldn't actually get any farther or closer to an object than one to one because by then the camera would basically be right on top of the uh, subject. So anyway, great lens, really easy bellows system to use. Thank you, Cambo. Finally, here are a few images I took with the GFX. Unfortunately, they have been mangled either by my newbie skills or by Apple movies. Whatever the case, take a look at their focus and uh, enjoy what...